The protagonist of the manga is puzzled as to how the main character Lina could appear at this time and place. He feels confusion and tension from the unexpectedness of the situation. The woman silently observes the man who seems suspicious to her. She demands that he wait. The woman irritably accuses the man of cowardice, revealing that he is afraid of something or someone. Her condemnation sounds distinct but not resentful. Her maid happily announces that she has finally found her. The maid's face shows excitement, but also relief at the reunion. The maid kneels before the king, reporting that his majesty would be extremely concerned if he knew of her misbehavior. She is clearly frightened and regrets what has happened. The maid reverently asks her majesty to return home with her. She hopes for mercy and clearly wants to avoid trouble. The woman assures her maid that even if she escapes, the wedding will still not take place. She says this with a smile, showing that she is sure she is right. The maid wonders why the wedding will not take place, clearly not understanding the situation. She is waiting for an answer that can reassure her. The woman, smiling, explains that her future husband is a real scoundrel. She says this calmly and even with a certain amount of pleasure, as if she is not too bothered by it. Lena admits that she still can't believe what is happening. She realizes that she is a queen from a fictional story. The image reflects her connection to another person, their figures frozen against a gloomy interior. Lena continues to reflect that she, as a queen, in order to save her loved ones from an evil witch, has begun a series of attempts and actions. Against the backdrop of a dark cage with heavy chains, the tension and danger is palpable. Despite her best efforts, she realizes that she has failed to save an important person. Lena notes that the war between the two empires has erupted with renewed vigor and many lives have been lost. Lena mentions that she had to make difficult decisions in the process of pursuing the insidious witch Melissa. She does this while surrounded by two men who seem to support her. The next scene shows the heroine sitting on a horse with a hero named Bass. A romantic atmosphere surrounds them, as if they are immersed in a special feeling. Their journey together continues, giving the impression of harmony. Lena reflects on her life, envisioning it as a smoothly flowing plot filled with joy and well-being. She realizes that all her actions and experiences are only part of a fictional scenario that is carefully crafted. She disagrees with the prescribed fate and firmly resolves to confront it. In her quest to avoid the predicted marriage, Lena resolutely runs away as she ponders her next steps. Lena concludes that only by changing her predetermined life path can she influence her future. She is determined to break boundaries so that life can change. Upon reflection, Lena concludes that Bailey at Academy is not the main setting of her story. She believes that here she has a chance to take control and be more active. To her surprise, the main character from her story is also at the Academy. In a slight reverie, Lena speculates that there may be other people in this fictional world who, like her, have realized their situation. She is determined to find out who they are and form an alliance with them to change the course of events. A character named Bass addresses the girl, calling her sister. He looks puzzled and admits that the suddenness of what is happening has stunned him, rendering him speechless. Bass assumes that their help is not needed and suggests that his sister leave. She agrees to go with him. At this point, Lena reflects that a character named for has never met her in the manga, and so the main Lena doesn't hold a grudge or even recognize her yet. For is surprised to notice that another beautiful girl has appeared. He doesn't hide his admiration, but he thinks that this stranger has a complicated character, which he says with a thoughtful look. For decides to stop admiring her looks and instead encourages himself to use more effective ways to get girls' attention. He clearly shifts from an emotional response to a strategic approach the maid calls out to the girl, addressing her respectfully as an older sister. Lena, hearing her, responds, with a look of mild surprise on her face at the sudden address. A small boy appears, holding a teddy bear. He asks if Lena is participating in the entrance exam. Lena smilingly answers in the affirmative, asking how she can help. The boy enthusiastically states that he saw Lena easily handle her opponent and admires her strength. He looks genuinely impressed, and Lena smiles at his words. Lena questions his participation in the exam again, slightly surprised at his age. She thinks about how such a young child could be allowed to participate in a difficult test. The boy admits that he wouldn't have wanted to, but his father insisted on it. 
Lena finds him cute and can't hide her smile. The atmosphere around him softens at this scene. Lena reassures the boy, telling him that he shouldn't be afraid. She promises to help him if any difficulties arise. The boy thanks her, feeling more confident in her presence. The boy's eyes light up, however, and he thinks about how four will have to choose whose woman will win his or for himself. He is determined to win this time, which is evident by the determined look on his face. Lena stands in front of a group of wolves, who look at her warily and are clearly hesitant to attack. She is calm and confident, creating an air of authority over the situation. The maid is surprised to admire the heroine's strength and notices that she is completely calm and confident. There are onlookers standing around, watching this scene with amazement. Lena remembers that she is a princess of the Sveriland Empire and holds the first place among the noble girls. She realizes her influence and knows that her status is admired by those around her. She thinks about the fact that her life is controlled by more powerful forces, perhaps puppeteers from high society, who are pulling the strings and controlling her destiny, putting her in front of difficult choices. Lena feels that her participation in this game of fate is the result of political intrigue by a king who is trying to strengthen his alliance with other countries. She realizes that her personal feelings and desires are being ignored. Among the audience, someone comments on the girl's strength to handle a wolf pack and wonders how she did it. A boy with a teddy bear agrees that Lena is strong and can easily defend herself. The people around them discuss the heroine, noticing her amazing physical fitness and abilities. They assume that such a girl can definitely succeed if she enters the academy. Melissa realizes that something important is happening and feels that she should be ready for any surprises. She decides not to make any more mistakes and to remain vigilant in this challenging environment. Bass feels he must take control of the situation before Melissa can make her move and win the favor of the right people. He realizes that the chances of success are tied to determination and precise action. There is a crow sitting in a tree watching what is happening. She is probably playing the role of a spy, reporting the events at the academy to those who wish to keep the situation under control. In the training room, a group of professors are discussing that the new set of students seem to be quite interesting. One of the teachers, Andre Lanz, believes that a girl with fighting abilities could be a worthy candidate for their academy. Andre claims that with a talented candidate like this girl, the academy will be able to strengthen its position. He says this with confidence, as if he sees her as more than just a powerhouse. Another faculty member, Ed Helborn, expresses skepticism about Andre's confidence. He reminds that many candidates may not live up to expectations and one should not jump to conclusions. The head of the academy, James Calvin, smiles demurely and urges the faculty not to argue. He emphasizes the importance of observation and patience before drawing final conclusions. James assigns Andre the task of administering the final tests to the incoming students. He emphasizes that this is an important assignment and trusts Andre to complete it. Andre responds in the affirmative, showing his willingness to do the work. Andre points out the importance of making sure everything goes according to plan and reminds them that the selection process is serious. He warns his colleagues that there may come a time when they will have to make serious decisions for the good of the academy. Finally, Ed apparently disagrees with Andre's plans, expressing mild irritation. He jokingly offers to come out and discuss their differences in a more active way, reminding them of his determination and intransigence. Lena looks up at the building in surprise, recognizing it as Bailey at Academy. She is amazed at how easily she was able to get in. Her face shows pride in her abilities, and she even mentally thanks fate for such good fortune. Bass and Lena turn their attention to Fora, who is trying to draw attention to himself. Bass looks at him suspiciously, not understanding his intentions. The man informs her that he has news and suggests that they will have to part for a while. Lena reacts with surprise at his words, wondering what has happened to Four. She is clearly concerned that he has decided to leave at such an important time. Her eyes express uncertainty and worry. Bass reassures his sister that Four probably has his reasons for this decision and offers to confide in him. Lena, though she remains on guard, realizes that Bass is right and agrees to leave the situation without interference. For recalls that despite his reluctance to leave, his duty demands that he do so. He jokes to himself as he imagines what his leaving will look like. His thoughts are centered on the events to come, and he looks for ways to do it elegantly. 
A boy with a teddy bear, asking if these people are really newcomers like him. For comments that the newcomer's appearance only emphasizes their weakness and notices the lack of real strength. Lena notices Melissa approaching and suddenly feels unprepared. She is confused wondering how it is that they met at this moment. Her anxiety is evident in the expression on her face. Melissa recognizes the main character and is surprised by her presence here. She is clearly puzzled by this coincidence and is trying to figure out how she can best react to this situation. Lena calms herself down, thinking that she's changed now and is not the same person she used to be. She is confident that she can fool Melissa into thinking that her changed demeanor and mannerisms are hiding her true intentions. Lena recognizes Bass and expresses her concern. She thinks back to the man who has caused her a lot of trouble in the past and feels her body tense up at the memory. Lena notices that Bass is starting to sweat and asks if he's sick. Bass assures her that he's fine, explaining that he's just a little hot. However, his look betrays an underlying concern. Bass offers his sister to wipe the sweat from her face. He carefully touches her forehead despite her protests, trying to show that he cares for her and is ready to support her in any situation. Lena watches this with surprise and slight jealousy. She ponders how she should act in response to Bass' attention to the other girl. Her thoughts show her scrutinizing his every move. Lena ponders that Bass called Melissa's sister, but did he really need someone else? She wonders about his real intentions and ponders how sincere his words are. For, being around the boy, thinks that the learning process this year will be especially challenging. He realizes that the newcomers to the academy are going to show their best sides and prove their superiority. The boy, holding a teddy bear, confidently declares that they are sure to prove their superiority this year. He proudly speaks of his confidence and belief in their future success. For, slightly nervous, remarks to himself that so far their confidence doesn't seem serious. His thoughts emphasize that the real test is ahead and he will have to monitor the situation carefully. For smiles and jokes that he'll try to wait and see what happens next. The boy with the teddy bear agrees with him, expressing his approval. Bass asks for if he is indeed a student of Scarf Academy. Lena stands nearby, watching the conversation closely, suspecting that Four's name might be fake. She wonders why he is trying to approach their group. For turns to Melissa, apologizing for his deception. He explains that his goal is to find talented people and invite them to join the academy. Lena listens carefully to his words, realizing that Four was trying to use his false name to gain trust. Bass expresses doubt about the veracity of Four's words. He believes that as the son of a noble, Four does not give the impression of a man of high status, pointing out his lack of insignia and manners. Melissa comments in a whisper that the name Bass sounds too much like the name of the manga's protagonist. She begins to wonder if there is something behind this coincidence, and her suspicions grow stronger. Lena is surprised to notice that Fur is wearing a patch over one eye. She recalls that the main character of the manga didn't have such a patch, and this discovery leaves her perplexed and with even more questions. Fur apologizes, removing the patch from his eye. He admits with a smile that he doesn't actually have any injuries, and the patch is just part of his image. Respectfully, he turns to Melissa, apologizing for his behavior. He hopes that she can forgive him for his deception and won't be angry. Lena, meanwhile, is surprised to realize that Four is the character who was her lover in the manga. Bass whispers that Melissa is too stubborn to ever forgive such deceptions. Melissa, on the other hand, laughs, brushing off the situation and stating that she won't get angry over such petty things. Her cheerful mood emphasizes that she's not taking what happened seriously. Lena comments that Fur has caused them a lot of trouble during their journey. She hints that his main goal is to get closer to the protagonist. Bass, slightly embarrassed by his sister's words, asks her if she's not used to saying what she thinks. Fur cautions everyone that their conversations could lead to misunderstandings. He asks them not to jump to conclusions and states that they are all here for temporary reasons. Lena notes to herself that she finds the situation confusing, especially when it comes to their relationship with Melissa. Suddenly, someone draws attention to a person approaching. It turns out to be a female instructor, Ed Lecavan, who greets the students and expresses her joy at the large number of new faces who have passed the entrance tests. 
Melissa is surprised to notice Edla Kavan and comments that her presence at the Academy speaks to her importance. She mentions with admiration that Edla is the only female instructor at the Academy, and her support can make a big difference in their success. Melissa explains that according to the plot of the manga, Edla Kavan is an important figure for all students who dream big. Face thinks back to the unpleasant things Melissa has done in the past, and his thoughts begin to bother him. He wonders why exactly now it has come up in his mind and feels fear clench his heart. Face decides that he can't afford to succumb to her influence, after all, his main goal is to get into the academy. Melissa notices that Base looks worried and asks him if everything is okay, as his face is flushed. Base assures her that everything is fine, brushing off her concern. A confused Base assures Melissa that he's just overheated and that he's in no danger. Melissa continues to watch him suspiciously as he tries to hold himself steady. A boy with a teddy bear standing nearby expresses disappointment that Hellborn will not be the examiner. He was clearly hoping to see him here, but now he'll have to accept that fact. Lena thinks to herself as she remembers the details of the entrance exam. Only those who manage to hold the nameplates until the end of the test will be able to enter the academy. She ponders that they have an uphill struggle ahead of them. The entrance examiner announces the conditions, each will receive a nameplate, and for the next hour they will have to defend it against the others. Only the top 50 will get a coveted spot in the academy. Lena leans over to the boy and reassures him, promising him that he will definitely do well and get into the academy. Her confidence and calmness give him strength. The boy with the teddy bear thanks the heroine for her support, but still doubts who she is. Lena just smiles, keeping her thoughts to herself. Lena greets the boy with a smile, saying that they are happy to see such a strong newcomer among their own. She invites him to join them and shows her support. The boy expresses his admiration and gratefully accepts the invitation, feeling part of the team. He prepares for the challenges ahead, feeling confident in his abilities. Lena reflects to herself that, according to the original story, she should have been lower in rank and only joined their academy by coincidence. She decides that in this world she must take fate into her own hands and change the outcome of the story. Lena thinks that if she wants to change her fate, she can't let the manga storyline control her life. She is determined to change the future and control her destiny. Some of the people present express anxiety as they think about how they will be able to protect their plaques. They worry that they don't have enough skills to successfully pass the test. Melissa reassures them, assuring them that she will make it to the end. She says she won't give up until she reaches her goal. Someone nearby prays for her success and promises to cheer her on from the bleachers. Melissa smiles and thanks everyone for their support. She thinks to herself how lucky she is to surround herself with such caring and sweet friends. They reply to her that she can always count on them. Base smiles and says that he too has registered for the trial. He says he can protect Melissa now. Melissa notices that Base is too confident and expresses her displeasure. Base curiously asks when he became her bodyguard. Melissa says that despite his weakness, he always tries to protect her, and she appreciates him for that. Base confirms that he always thinks ahead to avoid trouble. He is grateful to Melissa for her care and support. For, noticing their conversation, asks if they are really ignoring him so much. He sarcastically says that he too took part in the trial and can defend Melissa. This annoys Base. Meanwhile, Lena approaches them, along with a boy and his teddy bear. Lena greets them, noting that they have met again. The boy looks a little surprised. One of the contestants, upon seeing the heroine, says with a chuckle that they have met again. He arrogantly asks her to give him the nameplate and humiliate herself in front of him, promising to keep her alive. Lena replies with a slight chuckle that his threats seem too flippant and he hasn't learned any lessons from the past. The boy with the teddy bear asks who the man is, to which Lena replies that he's just trash. The challenger, angered by her words, reminds her that he is a prince of a neighboring kingdom. He points out his high position and demands respect. Lena calmly replies that his kingdom has long been trying to destabilize her empire, and the authorities are already taking action. She is not afraid of his threats and is confident in her defense. The prince expresses surprise at her bravery and assures her that her defiant behavior will only bring her trouble. His smug face shows that he is confident in his power. 
Melissa ironically notes that the prince's appearance leaves much to be desired, hinting at his ugliness. She laughs, noting that even a normal person like her can't find anything attractive about him. Melissa and Lena stand side by side, watching the scene. Melissa expresses surprise as she recognizes a familiar figure among those gathered. Lena also notices it and wonders why she is helping them. A boy with a teddy bear addresses Foru, telling him that he shouldn't try anything with Lena because he won't get her. For, smiling confidently, replies that he's not worried, and he won't make any devious plans. For reflects on the fact that Melissa is always there for Lena and realizes that she will be an obstacle in his way. He ponders why he feels so strange. Melissa, approaching Lena, declares that she wants to team up with her. She assumes that the two of them can defeat the men and accomplish their goals. Melissa assures her that they are both strong women and if they work together, they can accomplish a lot. Lena gladly agrees, excited about Melissa's proposal. She confesses that it is a great fortune to have such a strong ally. Melissa notices a group of men nearby looking at her with interest. She mockingly notes that they probably want to join in, and that gives her confidence. Bass watches Melissa and thinks to himself that her self-confidence sometimes exceeds reasonable limits. He still doubts her actions, but can't help but admire her confidence. Lena agrees that this is a good opportunity to find out the truth about the woman in front of them. She reiterates her willingness to look into the situation. For makes a sarcastic remark about how the fight for the heroine's attention has become a competition. The boy with the bear expresses concern, noting that the fight could end badly. Base notes that they need to proceed with caution and warns against unnecessary violence. Lena, noticing the tension, suggests they calm down and resolve the matter peacefully. Melissa agrees with the heroine's suggestion and says that they are willing to surrender and give up the signs if it will end the conflict. Melissa demands that the man not only hand over the plaque, but also apologize to Lena. The man indignantly reminds her that he's a prince and doesn't have to apologize. Melissa coldly suggested that he think about what his country would prefer, a public apology or a loss of reputation. The prince astonishingly agrees to apologize and bends down to say the words of apology. He looks startled and realizes that arguing with Melissa is futile. Melissa chuckles, saying she should have apologized right away. For stands nearby, observing the situation, and for jokes that maybe this was Melissa's way of keeping order. For expresses his admiration for Melissa's ability to cope. He jokingly notes that Melissa seems too brave to be just a court lady. For smilingly thanks Melissa for her intervention, while Lena wistfully thinks that she would have had a hard time coping without Melissa. Melissa, discussing the situation with Lena, points out the importance of support between women. She notices that after what happened, no one dares to attack them anymore. Lena smiles and introduces herself as Lena, expressing her joy at knowing Melissa. Melissa thinks to herself that she likes Lena's boldness and that she looks like a strong ally. She reflects that by joining forces with Lena, they will be able to accomplish their goals. Lena thanks Melissa for her support, noting that an alliance with her will bring many benefits. Melissa hopes that their alliance will be long and successful. Melissa and Lena smile at each other, feeling that they have found in each other a trusted ally. Melissa places a reassuring hand on Lena's shoulder, promising to be there for her. For approaches Melissa and Lena, asking for their help in dealing with the remaining issues. Melissa promises to support him in this. Base approaches Melissa to join their group. Melissa cheerfully says that their team can't be defeated now. For supports Melissa, reassuring her and telling her that she looks beautiful. Melissa smilingly thinks that for does remind her of a puppy and then, jokingly admiring his bravery, puts her hand on his head. Seeing Melissa petting base, the character thinks about how she wishes she could take that hand away and forbid anyone from touching Melissa. The students welcome a new student to the academy, expressing their readiness to accept him, her into their ranks. One of the students suggests choosing the most appropriate path and making an informed decision. The boy with the teddy bear in his hand smiles and expresses doubt, believing that no one can take away his role. He continues to watch the events unfold. Melissa decisively announces her choice, stating that she has decided to join the Refined Academy. She thinks her destiny will tie her to the mainline. Base immediately declares that if Melissa joins the Refined Academy, he will go there too. 
Another character also agrees and says he will go with Melissa. Bass suddenly remembers that he was here to investigate, not to follow Melissa. He looks slightly embarrassed by his earlier statement. Lena turns to Melissa, noting that they will now be classmates. Melissa smiles and says she's happy about that. Melissa, introducing herself to Lena, emphasizes that despite their outward differences, she feels they will have a mutual understanding. She welcomes Lena to the academy. It is announced that the time for choosing an academy has come to an end. The students holding the sign should come to the assembly area immediately. The teacher from the academy begins keeping track of the students, announcing that all students who have successfully passed the entrance test are invited to the assembly. In the hall, the instructor congratulates the students who successfully passed the tests and says that they can now choose from several academies such as Martial Arts Academy, Refined Academy, and Tactics Academy. The two students immediately announce that they want to join the Academy of Tactics, loudly expressing their desire. For turns to the group of students with a smile, implying that their academy will lose again this year. Melissa stands nearby, watching the scene. The boy holds his teddy bear and reminds her that it's not the quantity but the quality of students accepted that matters. He looks confident. Melissa and Lena are walking together when the boy enthusiastically says that Lena has joined the Refined Academy and that their academy has now won. Melissa thinks back to her past life and realizes that her role has always been about battles, despite its importance in strategic planning. She notices that Lena's role in the original story was different. Melissa wonders if the connection to the original storyline is still there and has doubts about the changes due to her decisions. Bass looks at Melissa and wonders why her face suddenly became so serious when it came to joining the Tactics Academy. He is concerned about her reaction. Bass decides to find out if Melissa has any secrets she's keeping from him, and vows that he won't let her plans come to fruition if they conflict with his intentions. The teacher announces that the Tactics Academy has attracted the most students this year, and asks a representative of the academy to give a speech. For tells himself that he can't run away from his role in the academy, and sees it as an inevitable part of his life. Melissa reflects on the fact that she is always noticed no matter where she is, and that she attracts attention with her presence. Bass calls out to Melissa, wondering why she is always watching other men. Melissa is perplexed as to the reason for his question. Bass declares that he will protect Melissa and be her rock-solid support. Melissa smiles as she senses his loyalty and concern. Bass says with confidence that he will one day kill Melissa with his own hands. He thinks that changing the storyline was the wisest decision, because he didn't realize how much he hated her in this life. For announces that all newly arrived students need to move into the dorms, where they will begin seven days of preparation for the new school year. Melissa ponders that this preparation will be similar to army training. Melissa thinks that she has a chance to use these seven days to strengthen her relationship with the mainline, while simultaneously severing her ties with four and thus completely changing the plot. Bass approaches Melissa and suggests that they live in the same dormitory since they belong to the same family. Melissa is outraged by this suggestion. Melissa reminds Bass that he is a boy and he should live in the boy's dormitory. For insists that he is used to sleeping next to her and enjoying her scent. Melissa, unable to stand it, asks For not to say such romantic nonsense. She does it loud enough for everyone around to hear. Melissa, embarrassed, covers her mouth with her hand, but she is overwhelmed by her love for him. Melissa rebukes him again. Lina approaches Melissa and suggests they be roommates since they are both newly arrived students. Melissa smiles and agrees. For suddenly appears nearby and explains that he'll have his own room but he's willing to help if needed. For angrily asks him why he's using his powers to live with them. Bass won't let Melissa and Foro get close to each other, and Melissa reflects frustratedly on how she only managed to befriend the main Lena. Now fate brings her back together with the main character in Linia. Lena looks at Melissa with disbelief, and Melissa assures her that she's not trying to steal men away from her. She just wants to live with Lena and asks the protagonist to believe in her sincerity. Melissa agrees and asks Lena to take care of her. Lena rejoices, thinking that if Melissa does turn out to be the original Wicked Witch, she will never let Lena be alone with Bass so the plot doesn't go canon. Melissa finds herself in the Betel dorm looking at the beautiful building. 
She notes that the living conditions here are much better than what she had at the university. Inside the room, Melissa marvels at its spaciousness and comfort, especially the large bed. She enjoys being able to enjoy the birdsong every day. Melissa suddenly notices that there are only three beds in the room, even though there are four of them, and one man among them. She tries to understand why this arrangement is logical. Realizing that she has managed to stay away from Lena, Melissa thinks about how she will keep a safe distance from base. But now she worries that they may have to sleep together again. Melissa imagines a possible scenario in which she and four end up in the same bed again, which makes her feel uneasy and anxious. Lena jokingly threatens Melissa, saying she will destroy her as an evil witch. Melissa thinks about the fact that the main Lena lives nearby and she needs to be careful that she doesn't get killed for sleeping in the same bed as base. Melissa fearfully ponders the consequences if Lena finds out about her nightly visits. She fears it could lead to her death. For suddenly interrupts her thoughts by announcing that he's already put on his new school uniform. Base wonders if the uniform looks good on him. Melissa genuinely admires his appearance, inwardly noting how seductive his new look is. She thinks about how the school uniform gives him even more charm. Base approaches Melissa and tells her that the bed she's sitting on will be theirs to share. He adds that it looks very comfortable. Melissa mentally agrees that it would indeed be more comfortable to sleep alone. Base assures Melissa that he will go to the principal and ask for a private room so she can rest. Melissa responds by asking him not to do that. Base replies that he just wants to live with her. He takes Melissa into his arms. Melissa reflects on the fact that once she enters the academy, she will have to make contact with the main Lena to avoid problems. Base at this point thinks that he will watch Melissa's every move to find out the truth as soon as possible. Melissa feels trapped and is perplexed as to how to deal with Base's insistence. Base hugs Melissa, wondering what happened. Melissa notices that Base has the top button on his school uniform unbuttoned. Melissa tells Base to button the button and Base asks her to help him with it. Melissa thinks to herself that Base is being childish and grudgingly agrees to help. Base asks Melissa to put more effort into it, but she notices that the button hole is too small for the button to fit through. Lina watches suspiciously, puzzled as to what Melissa and Base are doing. She begins to think that Melissa is trying to possess her fiancé by taking over his heart and body. Lina imagines Melissa wrapping Base in restraints, not letting go until he dies of exhaustion. She decides that this time she will help Base avoid that outcome. For suddenly asks Lina what she's doing in this place. Lina quickly excuses herself that she was just passing by and heard strange noises coming from the room, but she wasn't eavesdropping. For pretends he didn't hear anything, but Lina insists that she heard noises and asks to check what's going on inside. For agrees and offers to go inside to sort things out. They open the door. Lina is excited at the opportunity to catch Melissa and thwart her plans for base. At that moment, an academy employee approaches them, wondering if they are looking for Melissa. The employee confirms that they heard strange noises and asks if Melissa is inside. Lina calls out to Melissa, trying to figure out what's going on. Melissa doubts they will believe her if she says she was helping base button up. Lina finds the situation amusing. Lena, turning to Melissa, expressed her concern that having men and women living in the same room might be uncomfortable. She suggested that Base move into her room so they could live together. She figured that if Melissa wanted to hurt Base, Lena could intervene in time. Base indignantly rejected Lena's offer, saying that he had serious insomnia and wouldn't be able to sleep without Melissa. He firmly clung to her, demonstrating that he had no intention of letting anyone separate them. Melissa tried to calm Base down by offering her help. She offered that she would come over every night to lull him to sleep and then return. The thought swirled in Melissa's mind that she wouldn't miss the chance to strengthen her bond with the main Lena. But Base expressed doubts about Melissa's plan. For reminded her that according to the rules of the school, once a room had been assigned, it couldn't be changed. He hinted that Lena would have to accept this state of affairs. The girls asked in surprise if they could make an exception and assign Base a separate room so that men and women could live separately. For pointed out that Base himself had told him that he and Melissa always slept together, so that was how it had been decided to house the students. Melissa was horrified that her lie had come out. 
Bay stepped closer to Melissa and asked with interest if she had really said those words to the principal. Melissa, a little embarrassed, admitted that she was simply telling the truth. The realization of the consequences of her action made her fall to her knees, worrying whether Principal Lena would believe that she was sleeping with her fiancé without losing her honor. For emphasized that all the dorm rooms were already taken and there would be no vacancies until after the training camp. He suggested that they return to talking about any requests after the training period was over. Base figured that if he had to find a room again after training was over, he wouldn't be able to watch Melissa around the clock. He figured he'd have to find a way to stay close by to keep her from escaping his control. Perhaps he should have taken a lesson or two from his sister on how to fool the training facility. The next day, the students gathered for a lecture. The teacher explained that there were five levels of masters in alchemy, beginner, intermediate, advanced, high, and highest level. The students listened to him attentively, realizing the importance of each stage of learning. Melissa seemed to be thinking about how best to adapt to the new reality, for even rules as strict as those in this academy could be easily circumvented. The teacher explained that an excellent alchemist could play a crucial role in a battle. He emphasized that high-level alchemists had the ability to transform matter and change the shapes of their tools at will. His lecture was full of knowledge, but Melissa began to yawn with boredom. She thought she had already learned all these attitudes when she read the original. Melissa, tired of lecturing, got bored and decided to take a nap right in class. She was so calm that not even a crow on the window could distract her. Apparently, she had a special ability to pass out in the most unexpected places. The teacher went on to explain that witches' magic required rituals to activate their spells, while alchemists could transfer their energy and manipulate objects directly. Lina, listening to this, exclaimed, marveling at alchemy. She noticed that Melissa only seemed to be sleeping and doing nothing. He found her adorable even in moments of sleep, believing that beautiful faces like hers were good in all situations. Lina, who took up the task with full determination, remembered how in her previous life she had learned how to become a high-level commander. The teacher continued his demonstration, showing how using alchemy, he could change his form. He asked the student known as Finn to show an example. Finn proudly stepped forward, taking his teddy bear with him. He introduced himself to the class, explaining that his real name was Liren. Melissa realized that this was the same student who had been the number one ranked student at the academy in the original story. That explained why he seemed vaguely familiar to her. The teacher announced that the first test for the newcomers would be to search for alchemical materials in the forests of Mount Grimm. Lina and Liren found themselves on the same team. During the trial, they got lost in a storm and eventually decided to take shelter in a cave to wait out the weather. Liren got sick from the cold and Lina stayed by his side, never leaving his side. This touched Liren, but before he could express his feelings, he died of his illness. For, upon learning of Liren's death, thought that it only lessened the number of Melissa's enemies. Melissa reflected that despite her human principles, it was unlikely that she would have been able to save Liren in that situation. She felt that the circumstances were simply against them. The teacher explained to the students that they would be divided into teams and sent into the mountains to search for materials needed to learn alchemy. The teacher announced that the teams would be formed randomly by drawing lots. When Melissa's name was called, she watched with interest to see who else would make her team. BAS assured Melissa that even if they ended up on different teams, he would still switch with someone to be by her side and protect her. Melissa noted with a slight smile that she had enough of his intention, but added that she would never agree to a trade. BAS was amazed at her determination. Lena, watching the conversation, thought about how infatuated Melissa was with BAS and laughed quietly to herself. It seemed to her that this could play into their friendship if things worked out the way they needed to. Lina remembered that Liren was the same man who had died due to illness during the storm in the original story. She decided that if she could influence fate this time, she would try to avoid being on the same team as him. But then a thought crossed her mind, would her own interference cause her teammates to get hurt as well? Doubts grew like clouds on the horizon. Melissa felt a growing unease as she considered all the options. She realized that choosing between her own safety and the safety of the team could be a daunting challenge. Lina met Liren's gaze and hesitated. She realized that she could lose a man if left alone in a dangerous situation. 
Meanwhile, the teacher announced that the assignments for these seven days of the training course would be difficult and would require the completion of missions. His words sounded serious and the students listened attentively. The teacher announced that seven different missions had been prepared to practice their complex skills. He explained that at the end of the course, students would be awarded stars based on their success in completing them. Melissa, immersed in her thoughts, was shocked at how high the requirements were. It became obvious to her that even the slightest mistake could cost her a place in the academy. The teacher added that those who scored less than two stars at the end of training would be expelled from the academy. This statement caused outrage among the students. Whispers and discussions started in the classroom. Several students looked upset as they realized what was in store for them. They did not want to be expelled from the prestigious academy. The teacher turned to Learin, putting him in charge of gathering information about the teams. Learin politely agreed, taking on that responsibility. Melissa, worried about her position, quickly raised her hand to ask a question. She wanted to know if security students, such as four, could participate in the draw. The teacher confirmed that the rules were that guards didn't have to participate, but they were required to accompany the recruits for their safety. Melissa thought that this did leave room for unpredictability after all. Four, who was also concerned, wanted to clarify a few things. The teacher looked at him with interest, waiting for questions. The teacher waited patiently to see what Four would ask, noticing his raised hand and determined expression. Obviously, the training had raised a lot of questions among the students. Lynette explained that Lima originally belonged to the Alchemy Academy, which meant that those who got on his team would probably get an advantage and earn stars faster. She expressed concern that it might not be fair to the other freshmen. Lina suggested her plan to address this concern and protect all the recruits. She suggested to the teacher that this could be used to prevent Learin and Melissa from teaming up, thus changing the course of the story. The teacher listened carefully to Lina's suggestion and asked her to continue. He seemed interested in her idea, which gave her confidence. Lina suggested splitting the teams by appointing Lame and Four as leaders of the two groups of recruits. She added that the students could choose which team they wanted to join. Lina mentally noted that this decision would allow her to avoid uniting Learin with Melissa and thus avoiding possible deaths among the main characters. She looked pleased with her plan. Melissa listened as Lina continued to discuss her idea, pondering how her actions might affect the outcome of events. Her face reflected determination and seriousness. However, Base disagreed with Lina's proposal. He was concerned that if he and Melissa were assigned to different teams, they might end up on opposite sides of the barricades, increasing the risk of expulsion from the academy. Base emphasized that he was not going to sit idly by. He looked at the teacher with an expression of firm confidence in his decision. The teacher praised the students for their active participation in the discussion from the very first day of training. He invited BAS to express his ideas. Base suggested doing a trial to confirm qualifications for team participation. He explained that some students might be close to family members or friends, and that would help avoid conflict and ensure fair distribution. Melissa listened to Ba with mild surprise. She thought it was the first time she had ever heard BAS speak so formally and confidently. It added to his points in her eyes. The teacher in the class asked if anyone agreed with Ba's proposal. Several students raised their hands expressing their support for his idea. The class gave a friendly cheer to Bass's proposal, showing that his idea resonated with many. The teacher seemed satisfied that the students were taking the initiative. The teacher suggested starting the process of drawing lots to assign students to teams, respecting the opinions of everyone present. He raised his hand, calling for order. Melissa and BAS were seated at the table. BAS turned to Melissa, asking why she was looking at him. Melissa assured him with a smile that she just thought he was smart. Melissa mentally rejoiced that she didn't have to confront Bias, or the situation might have gotten more complicated. She was relieved that everything had gone smoothly. The moment of the draw came. A group of students gathered near the teacher to draw their numbers. Melissa walked up to the line, waiting for her turn. Melissa was inwardly pushing her luck, wanting to draw the number that would secure her a team with the main line. She was determined to make an impact. When it was Melissa's turn, she confidently approached the table. 
Her teacher handed her the draw box and she looked at it carefully. Melissa mentally noted that the teacher looked surprisingly serious. She took the box and pulled the ticket with the number on it. To her relief, she saw that the number on the ticket matched her wish. She smiled, feeling luck on her side. For, standing nearby, invited Melissa to join his team, no matter what number she drew. Melissa thanked him for the invitation, but added that she only intended to work with people who really wanted to succeed. Melissa thought about how she didn't remember there being a toss-up scene in the original storyline. She curiously pondered who she would draw and how it would affect future events. Melissa pulled out her hand with the ticket and looked at it carefully. She eagerly awaited the result, hoping that luck would be on her side. Meanwhile, BAS was thinking with a serious look that no matter who Melissa ended up with on the team, he would not miss the opportunity to watch her and control her actions. His plan was to keep an eye on Melissa at all times. BAS added that once they entered the Zagres Mountains, she would have a chance to meet the Witch Queen, and he wanted to be there to control the situation. His determination was evident. Melissa revealed that she had drawn the ticket with the number 6, and as it turned out, BAS had drawn the same number. They both marveled at the coincidence that their teams matched. It meant that they would be working together. Lena also drew a ticket with the number 6 and was a little puzzled to find herself on the same team as Melissa and BS. She realized that this could be dangerous. Melissa and Lena, despite their worries, hugged and happily declared each other teammates. They expressed their joy at being on the same team together. At the moment of the draw, Lima suddenly announced that he too had drawn number 6. The surprise of those present was evident as this turn of events seemed unbelievable. For told Basu with a smile that he understood his desire to be on a team with Melissa, but it was impossible for three people to draw the same number. BAS was asked to look at the number on his ticket. Bay showed his ticket, which had the number 6 on it, adding that his number was indeed that number. This caused even more amazement to the people around him. Two female students sitting nearby looked at each other and began to whisper that perhaps their tickets could be repeated as well, which created excitement among the others. For remarked that in such a situation it would be appropriate to conduct a contract test to see who really owned number 6. He looked interested, and the others looked wary. They suggested their idea, noting that such a test would help to clear things up. For supported the suggestion with a smile. Ba confidently promised Melissa that he would definitely protect her, and that they would return from the mission together. He was determined not to part with her. Lina, realizing the plot development, decided that this case gave her an opportunity to get closer to uncovering information about the witches. She was determined to take any chance she could get. The director approached Melissa, inviting her to ask any questions as part of the contract test. Melissa had an idea and was ready to begin the test. Alyssa asked if it was really possible to ask any questions, and the director confirmed that it was possible. She bravely decided to take the test, believing that it would give her the opportunity to reveal important secrets. The director explained that the result of the test would be an indicator of trust and commitment. If the answers varied, it would indicate a lack of trust. Melissa decided it would be an interesting experience. She paused, pondering her next steps, and began to ask her first question. Her question was quite unusual, what gets up earlier than a rooster, sleeps later than a dog, eats more than a pig, and works the hardest? Both quiz takers, Lena and BAS, looked puzzled as they tried to find the correct answer. Lyman and Lily stood, clearly puzzled by the question Melissa had asked. Both tried to figure out what was meant, but never seemed to have heard of such a creature. Melissa, feeling confident in her knowledge, reasoned that perhaps she was mistaken because there was no mention of such creatures in the original story. She wondered if she might have missed something important. A whisper arose in the audience, and one of the students asked in amazement if such an animal really existed. Lena joined the discussion, clearly puzzled by what she had heard. The principal tried to calm the audience by calling for silence. He then turned to Lima, asking if he had heard anything about such a creature. Lima looked concerned, not knowing what to say. Melissa's answer stunned Lime, making him blush with embarrassment and surprise. Melissa replied that the correct answer was a person, which caused quiet laughter in the audience. Bass seemed embarrassed as well, and he asked Melissa softly what her answer meant. 
Melissa only smiled and stated that such an explanation could only cause surprise. Melissa then decided to continue the game and suggested the next question. She asked, who leaves the most important reports at work at night and gets paid a meager salary for it? The question caused the students to be even more surprised. They didn't understand what Melissa could have meant and waited impatiently for her answer. Melissa, savoring the moment, announced that the answer was again simple and obvious, smiling her enigmatic smile. The instructor offered to complete the test, noting that Melissa was automatically the team leader because of her quick wit and resourcefulness. She felt confident that she could keep base safe if things went wrong this time. Melissa was glad that her plan had worked and she would now be one step ahead of everyone else in her role as leader. She felt that it was the best way to keep the entire team safe. They suggested that they change the distribution of the teams. He confidently stated that he wanted to replace Melissa with someone else, clearly unhappy with the situation. The teacher turned to Lime, offering to join the team. Lime politely declined, stating that she preferred to be under Fortman's leadership. Surprised cheers erupted in the hall. Fortman, sensing that his plans were being ruined, grudgingly told Lima that he could not choose his own team and that the rules were the same for everyone. Lima insisted on his choice. Lime confidently replied that he was joining Fortman's team. Melissa, grinning, reminded Lime that although the protagonist didn't usually turn down assignments, things had gone a little wrong this time. Fortman, approaching Melissa, noted with interest that her answers were unexpectedly clever. He leaned closer, asking if she could answer him one question. Melissa felt slightly embarrassed. The situation was beginning to seem a little confusing to Melissa, and she decided it might be worth taking a step back and taking a pause. She thought it was supposed to be different in the original story. Fortman was still standing next to Melissa, waiting for her response. Melissa wondered how best to handle the situation. She was sure she could handle it if she made the right move. Melissa, deciding that action was necessary, exclaimed that she was willing to answer any question he was interested in. Fortman smiled as he offered her an answer to the riddle. Melissa realized that the situation was not in her favor and smiled back. She knew that Fortman intended to test her, and she was ready for it. The four sat together, and Bass shared his thoughts about Melissa with the others, claiming that he and Melissa were on the same team. To that, Melissa, a little aloofly, reminded him that three people couldn't be on the same team. Bass looked disappointed. He couldn't understand why the protagonist was back with another guy and not him. The situation was clearly discouraging him and he was losing confidence. The girl sitting next to him tilted her head slightly and motioned for everyone to gather and move on to their training. She seemed calm, her face expressing determination and focus. Melissa stood next to Lima and Fortman, looking at them. She sensed that something unusual was going on between the two of them, perhaps related to their pasts or hidden agendas. Bass thought with worry on his face that maybe Lena had something to do with what had happened with Melissa. He realized that their relationship clearly had deep roots. The appearance of the mysterious man in the background suggested that perhaps Lyme was playing a more important role than it seemed. He held Melissa's hand, their interaction looking all too familiar. The instructor urged all the participants to pack up and head for the mountains, not wasting time talking. He wanted everyone to be ready for the ordeal. Fortman asked Melissa with a smile if she had remembered to bring everything she needed. He assured her that she could feel safe in their pairing. Melissa, slightly embarrassed, thanked him for his concern. Fortman continued to flirt with Melissa, telling her that she was special and that he couldn't lose her. Meanwhile, Lime was watching them, clearly jealous. Lena, looking over Melissa and Fortman, questioned if she really needed that kind of security. His voice was full of irony. Melissa tried to calm him down, telling him not to get worked up. The teacher waved his hand, telling everyone that it was time to head to the mountains to collect rare materials. It was a moment when discipline and determination came first. Fortman again expressed his concern for Melissa's safety, assuring her that he would be there for her. Melissa looked at him, remaining calm but with a slight smile on her lips. The scene shifted to the forest where Lyman and Bass were discussing plans for the day. Lime chided Bass for his lack of initiative, pointing out that it would be difficult to succeed on their team. Melissa stood slightly off to the side, watching the discussion. 
She realized that she would face challenges on this team, but she was prepared for them. Base pondered what Melissa was doing. He noted that her behavior had become odd since she had been put on the same team as Fortman. Base held the strange rock in his hands, examining it. Lillian stood next to Base, looking at the beautiful mushrooms. She admired their appearance, saying they looked amazing. When she reached for a mushroom, Base quickly stopped her, warning her not to touch it. He said the mushrooms could be poisonous and pose a danger. Squatting down next to the mushrooms, Lena asked if they had poison. Base only shrugged as if this fact was unknown to her. Base mentally imagined using the mushrooms to create potions that could cloud the mind and cause seduction. His fantasies took him into a world of dark thoughts and secret desires. In his thoughts, he recalled himself with Melissa. She felt like a conqueror, ready to capture his attention at any cost. Back to reality, Base stopped abruptly, realizing that these mushrooms might not be so good. He decided not to take any chances and leave them alone. Lena looked at Base in surprise. She didn't understand his sudden change in behavior, but decided not to ask unnecessary questions. Sudden thunder rumbled in the clear sky, causing Base to startle. Lillian noticed that the thunderstorm was approaching and suggested they go down the mountain to avoid the rain. For agreed with Lillian, saying that safety was more important than anything else. He suggested that everyone stop what they were doing and descend immediately. Base disagreed with the decision, saying that he still needed to find the necessary materials. He insisted on staying. For, as leader of the group, insisted, instructing Base to follow his orders. Base reluctantly complied and agreed to go down with the others. Base looked anxiously at the dark sky, noticing that the rain was already beginning to fall. His uneasiness increased. Half a day later, the rain had not stopped. Base began to worry that he wouldn't be able to get down the mountain in time. The moment the real thunderstorm began, Base realized that the situation had become serious. He realized that their group needed to seek shelter. Lillian asked Base where Melissa was. Base was unable to answer without knowing where she was. Base looked around and noticed other students standing in the rain. He decided that they needed to join forces and find Melissa. Realizing that the situation was getting dangerous, all the students started looking for Melissa so they could join forces and go down the mountain together. He suggested that everyone stick together and go forward. He pointed to a shelter up ahead where they could wait out the storm. Learin and Melissa, taking shelter from the rain, walked through the forest. Learin looked weakened, and Melissa helped him stay on his feet. Under the cover of the trees, she suggested that they gather and stay together to avoid trouble. She looked determined to protect everyone. Melissa grinned and assured Base that she wasn't easily intimidated. She was confident in her abilities and wasn't going to back down. Angry at Melissa's joke, but tried not to show his annoyance. He reminded her that they weren't just playing, but were in a dangerous situation. She moved closer to Learin, saying she was checking his temperature. He felt embarrassed, but continued to pretend that everything was under control. Melissa, smiling mockingly, told Learin that even his attractiveness didn't justify his actions. She suggested that he keep his hands to himself. With that, he exhaled and was relieved that they had finally found a safe place. He looked around to make sure the others were okay. Learin motioned for Melissa to step back as he felt better. He was annoyed by her control. In the darkness of the night, Melissa thought for the first time about the strength of the other girls. She realized that their team was at a disadvantage. She noticed that despite the strengths of their leaders, the girls on the team might be struggling because they lacked combat experience. Lyman and the others looked at Melissa as she pondered how to adapt to the current situation. He suggested that Melissa put forward a plan of action. Learin supported Melissa, ready to follow her plan. He wanted to know what she would do next. Melissa was determined and confident. She realized that her life was at stake and she was going to fight to the end. Learin continued to watch Melissa carefully. He thought about why her behavior raised so many questions. He couldn't get enough of her confidence. Melissa looked around and realized that she needed to act quickly. She told the others that she was going to start a fire to keep warm. She took some twigs and tried to start a fire, 
but it was harder than expected. She kept her composure. Learin advised Melissa to take her time and be careful. He warned that it would not be easy to start a fire in this weather. Melissa decided to try her own way. She concentrated and cast a spell, creating a small flame in the palm of her hand. Melissa cheered as she saw her magic working. She successfully started a fire, warming everyone around her. Learin stood nearby, his clothes wet from the rain. He looked at the fire, savoring its warmth. Melissa felt proud of her success. Learin was stunned when he saw Melissa using her powers. He realized that her magic was much stronger than he had imagined. Melissa smiled slightly, savoring the moment. She realized that with her help, the group could survive this storm. At that moment, Bass burst into the shelter, surprised and excited. He wanted to know what was going on here. 